I'm so ready. I'm so ready. I hope you guys are excited for this because I am ready. I am ready for Wreck and Ragnarok to just knock all of our expectations out of the water and just to be honestly an amazing experience. Today we're going to be looking at the second trailer as sort of an appetizer and then I want to jump into episode one of Wreck and Ragnarok. I feel like this fight between Heracles and Jack the Ripper will be kind of like a battle of wits versus strength or brawn. It'll be interesting. Ooh, Battle of the Souls. I love the soundtrack. Oh, I cannot wait to see this fight. I've heard so many things about Raiden. I know a lot of you guys are a big fan of him. I just know Shiva and Raiden's fight are gonna be such like a physically intense battle. I wonder if Loki's gonna fight. I feel like his fight will be interesting. Oh, at least he's so many new characters. I'm so ready. I'm so ready. So usually I do watch anime series in the English subtitles, but some of you guys suggested that maybe I should try this series out in the English dub. So I'm gonna give it a try today. Let me know if you guys do prefer either English sub or dub for next episodes. You're all completely terrified, aren't you? I love the voice actor for Brunhilde. No, Adam! I'm so happy he won this fight. The art feels a lot smoother. It definitely feels like a step up from season one. I can't wait to see Buddha's fight and Shiva's fight. Oh, are these the other Valkyrie? I'm totally expecting them to launch into a whole backstory for each of the gods and humans that end up fighting the rounds. I think that's my favorite, favorite part of the theme song. It just, the chorus is so good. Good versus evil. I'm just gonna say it because we're probably all thinking it. Hercules is like, he's muscular. He literally with his little whisk. I'm sorry guys, it, it still looks like a whisk to me. I know it's supposed to be some intimidating weapon. Like I'd be very surprised if Hercules will be kind of pulling some kind of like witty tricks or kind of schemes in the fight. Like I'm expecting that from Jack the Ripper, but from Hercules, it just feels very straightforward. Just very much like, you know? Is she? Oh! Well, hello to you. I'm surprised they're in such good terms. I guess it makes sense because they're, they're all kind of, in a way, for humanity. I mean, Hercules is fighting for the opposite side, but still. He's a demigod. Good luck, brother. Thanks. Same to you. He just seems like a straightforward fighter. I don't think he's going to pull any tricks. Really had a moment there. It was Loki, isn't it? Mankind is strong, Loki. Don't underestimate. Hmm. So it seems like Hercules does support humanity. I wonder why he's fighting for them. Is it just because of, I guess, loyalty, honor, all that? I represent the gods on the field of battle and claim my victory. Yeah, he feels like a soldier, like an honest soldier. I'll ask for humanity to be spared. Bruh. Hercules feels very naive here to me. I mean, you could definitely tell he's kind of that straightforward. He says what's on his mind. He's very upfront about his intentions. He feels naive. In a way, I feel like he's kind of being used by the gods here because he doesn't support the elimination of humanity. Yet he's kind of fighting for the elimination of humanity. And then he's, his plan, I guess, is to, after he wins the petition to keep humanity as is. I really don't think that would fly. I mean, with the God's ego, I highly doubt. That they wouldn't just wipe humanity out. Especially now that humanity has won some of the rounds, or I guess one of the rounds now. Talking, or are you just struggling to pick a side? Hmm. What a greasy look. The side of justice, right. What is this? <laughs> well, it's hard to know who to root for, isn't it though? 
What's with the smirk? In the gods' corner, we have a man so pure of heart he ascended to become a god among heroes. Humanity's corner, a black-hearted monster. See, I wonder how they're gonna spin this. Because I feel like, okay, obviously right now, I feel like the crowd is gonna try and root for, you know, the righteous character, Hercules. He's the more, you know, on the side of justice. It seems like a clear-cut answer. But I wouldn't be surprised if they reveal Jack the Ripper here has some sort of sad, tragic villain origin story, and that's why he does the things that he does. What is this? Nobu, Adam, and Kojiro Sasaki were all men of honor, worthy champions. Oh, he's pissed. I will stand for this. I won't let you mock me, Brunella. The way he's powering reminds me of like the whole Dragon Ball Z with the hair flying up. Dragon Ball Z like transformations. Call him Jack the Ripper, the most elusive murderer in human history. Ah, here we go. Backstory. It was a mystery, one that even my Sherlock could never hope to solve. <gasps> Is this Watson? Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, the mystery novelist. Oh, okay. Lay down your arms and surrender now. I'll speak to Zeus and request that you be spared from Neville Hamer. I don't think that would work. My good sir, I knew you were a fine man. Oh, I love the voice actors here. You've made me an offer I simply must refuse. He seems pretty polite. I am nothing if not a gentleman. Those really look like two giant scissors or like shears. Divine treasure. My volunda. Uh, they're actual scissors. <laughs> Wait, wait. Did, did he just? <laughs> I did not expect this turn of events. I mean, I'm pretty sure there's some scheme on Jack the Ripper's part, but this is still hilarious. <laughs> is he drinking tea? Man's just having a moment. It's tea time. He's so stress free. The storm, not the tea time. <laughs> He's like, sorry, I have a schedule to keep up. I gotta have some tea, you know? Would you care for a cup yourself? Oh, oh how polite! He's even offering some. <gasps> What's this? Oh, a trap! A useless pieces of trash like this won't even leave a scratch on a god's body. I feel like this is a trick to lower his guard. <laughs> He's kind of like Batman. <laughs> He's just constantly leaving. Oof. The whisk versus the shears. Oh. Did the Volander just break like that? I hope that's not the real Volander. I don't think it just broke. I think maybe that's some sort of decoy shears or something. How many knives does he have? What? I knew it! I knew it! It was all a scheme. Those are the real weapons. The real Volander. I told you those scissors were my Volander, didn't I? He lied to you. You see, I'm afraid that I lied. I like this villain. These knives are your Volander. Wrong again, my gullible friend. What's this real one? It's this. A satchel that creates divine weapons. That is so incredibly clever. I feel like this is such a clever approach. I really admire Jack the Ripper's fighting style so far. Cause obviously, I mean, he's very physically, you know, outmatched by Hercules. And he's using the terrain to his advantage. Definitely for sure. And I think it's so clever though, because even if you lose the knives or something happens, you can always get more. Like. This is great. I'm loving how this fight is progressing. I'm unable to produce anything larger than the bag itself. All great artists have their tools tailor-made. He's got style. Although it does bother me that he just kind of shared all the details of how the satchel works. What were you thinking choosing this guy? I don't understand why- I mean, he represents humanity, so I think it makes sense. I mean, humanity has the good and the bad, right? I like that they kind of mixed in someone who wasn't your stereotypical, like, hero fighting for humanity. Don't play dumb. It's malice. <laughs> that face! 
Catch him if you can. Morally malformed, maleficent murderer is malice manifested. I love the intro. <laughs> the way he's waving this whisk around, I can't. He's deflecting every last one. How I speak when I'm in the kitchen. Interesting. You usually see kind of the normal, I guess, common people in the crowd, but now you see some of the people that are rooting for him seem like, you know, they seem some more, like, kind of some of the more unsavory characters. Uh-oh. Is he gonna fly away? Oh, it's a shield! Interesting. Aren't you going to crush my he has such a nice, like almost like a mocking tone towards Hercules when he speaks. Oh, Nemean lion, devour my body whole! What? It, it looks like. This reminds me of like the curse mark from Naruto series. Lion. Oh, I love the animation here. Is this how it ends? Watch closely now. It's about to get interesting. Okay, that gives me hope that Brunello said that. I mean, it'll be too easy if he just falls here. Did he just snap a dislocated shoulder back into place? A labor we delight in physics pain. What did you say? You haven't heard that line before. You really ought to read more. During this whole fight, he basically just called Hercules uncultured, privileged. Apparently, he read my works, but they could not stop his reign of terror. What do you mean? Most of Shakespeare's works has someone betraying someone or murdering someone. What say you and I raise the curtain on Act Two? Oh, this episode flew by. I'm really impressed. The art has definitely stepped up. I enjoyed the voice acting and the voice dub. So you guys will have to let me know if you prefer the voice dub or subtitles for your next episodes. And the soundtrack's been pretty nice. Oh, she's so cute! We haven't seen her yet. I wonder if for one of the fights, Brunhilde might step up herself to be part of the Volander. I'm kind of rooting for Jack the Ripper, and I think because he seems to have a more clever way of scheming and, you know, fighting, I think he will actually win and beat Hercules. Let me know in the comments what scene you enjoyed the most, or what surprised you the most about season two so far, and I'll see you guys soon.